Hello guys and gals, and welcome to Deep Web Browsing episode number 103, the time of the week where we take a look at the uh, part of the internet that's a little too dank for regular viewing, or basically my, uh, my, my excuse for capping off a Sunday with something a little more chill, a little more interesting, and uh, something where we can get a whole random collage of things to look at together as a team. So while it's Sunday for you, it's another day for me as always through the power of video editing. That being said, let's sit back, relax, and see what today's websites are. All right, well, this is AliensTheTruth.com. Now, I believe I've shown this site to people before. I think I fucking must have had to because that ALMI looks very close to another ALMI I must have shown. But hey, you know what? Sometimes we get a, we get a similar site that we just... We, we might have to look at it again. I don't think I've ever shown this to you. But sometimes, you know, you can't really tell. These sites are so fucking similar to another one. So let's see this. Area 51 declassified CIA documents. <laughs> Oh, boy. You know, they're all just fucking... They're, they're all the same documents we've probably seen. Area 51 is a popular but not-so-affectionate moniker used to denote a remote Edwards Air Force Base detachment located in the Nevada Test Range and uh, Training Range. More specifically, Area 51 lies inside Nevada's southernmost region, about 83 miles north northwest west of Las Vegas. A large military field is also located in its center near Groom Lake's northern edges, first acquired by the U.S. Air Force in 1955. The site's then stated main purpose was to uh, serve as a testing facility for Lockheed U-2 aircraft. For those of you who don't know, the U-2 aircraft, I believe, was one of those aircrafts that went above planes at the time. I think it was almost like the uh, suborbital things or whatever. Um, and I think that was used to like get surveillance uh, from a place where nobody could fucking see you, right? Because you'd be past uh, the visible... Uh, you know, you'd be past the atmosphere, right? Like you'd be fucking saw up in the air and nobody's going to be noticing you. So that's basically what a for what it was for. Uh, so yeah, basically for those of you who are new to the whole Area 51 thing, Area 51 was uh, more realistically a place where a lot of U.S. stealth aircraft technology is tested. And I believe to this day, military experts correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the United States is still the leader in stealth aviation technology. Like, uh, you know, we're, we're not just talking predator missiles. We're talking like, uh, we're talking like, you know, those stealth bombers and shit like that. Like those planes that have, uh, the planes that really don't show up on radar. If they do, they're so negligible that they end up within being that margin of error in sonar detection patterns that, uh, you know, they're the ones with stealth aircraft that can really be noticed and taken out and shit like that. I'm sure a lot of other big countries have that stuff too now, but, uh, the United States because it's such a military heavy uh, country as well too. Like if you compare the United States as military to a lot of other countries, they're fucking the most well-funded and they're actually pretty fucking out, you know, they, they outclass a lot of people in a lot of things, you know, don't take that as an insult. You know what I mean? Like fucking other countries. I'm just, Trying to be PC right now, it's fucking too late at night to do that. Area 51's true purposes are top secret, as a lot of military installations are. Like, that's one thing that I think these sites forget to tell you, is that a lot of the shit is secretive. Like, the government keeps it secret. Like, a lot of this, any Air Force base is fucking secretive, you know what I mean? Although the U.S. Armed Forces contend that Area 51's primary on-site activities and functions are classified, certain historical data reportedly suggests that the most probable use is in experimental aircraft and weapons development. Yeah, I just told you that. Regardless of what's going on in Area 51, its intensely secretive aura has sparked widespread conspiracy theories and made the base an integral feature of UFO folklore. It's very true. A lot of people fucking believe that there's alien spaceships over there. I think people believe that the fucking Roswell crash that, you know, happened or whatever, that evidence is kept at Area 51. Area 51, collectively known as Extraterrestrial Highway, a nearby town named Rachel is also reportedly a popular tourist attraction for precisely the same reason. Area 51's entire border is plastered with conspicuously posted signs designed to warn the public that photography is for, uh, prohibit, prohibited. And the use of deadly force is authorized. And that's fucking very true, too, because if you go near the border for Area 51, you'll instantly start seeing, like, Yukons and shit pull up, like those big SUVs uh, that typically the feds drive. And I believe that there's even, like, uh, camouflage snipers that always, like, watch across the ridge to see, you know, somebody's over there. Um, you know, it's not like you're going to fucking walk over there and see, like, lasers show up like a fucking 80s movie, right? But the thing is, is that you're always on watch. Like, whatever. You cross that fucking border, dude. You do it at your own risk, is what I'm saying. I think you can take photos of the signs and stuff. And I think anything past that you can. Like, an aerial photograph, you can. And I think even if you look through, like, Google Maps and shit, it has to be blurred out because it just has to... 
You just have to fucking work with uh, U.S. law at that point, right? Declassified government documents pertaining to the Nevada test site or groom operations must be redacted to remove all references of Area 51. The sole known departure from this long-standing official practice was a memorandum issued in 1967 by the CIA director, Richard Helms, that mentioned three ox cart aircraft. So yeah, whatever. Basically, they're, uh, they're focusing on this stuff. But the interesting thing about this is that this site kind of focuses not so much on the Alamau conspiracy. I mean, it does, because it obviously has to, right? Because you know, at the end of the day, that's what the site is focused on. But I like the fact that they do show a more, um, what should I say, a human side to this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Where it's like, uh, like it's like this is what it also could be used for. There are some sites out there where they're like, oh, it's only for aliens and never, you know, for anything else. Or even that was used as a cover-up, which it wasn't, because... You know, obviously back in the Cold War, they needed to learn some stealth, you know, aircraft and use that against the you know, Soviet Union at the time, right, for spying infiltration and all that kind of stuff. So clearly there is – these people have a biased view, but they also give you the fact. So, you know, good good on them, right? So here they have like actual government records that you can look at. Now, these are declassified, so I am allowed to show you these government uh, – like uh, I am allowed to show them to you because the government like declassified – if they were classified documents – that were still under classification records, I'd be fucked because I ain't supposed to show you that shit. So this is the FBI UFO Vault FOIA library. This is the first time I heard of this. What is this? Freedom of Infor oh, Freedom of Information Act. All right, provisions. The uh, vault has kept on coming a very long way by quantum leaps and bounds every day. Per official U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation report, its newest brainchild brings in about five. Um, hmm. Get to the nitty-gritty at brass tacks of the vault's vast websites, nuts and bolts. At the last known count, the vault contained very close to 7,000 documents and other media converted to digitized format via meticulous scans done completely by hand. Such enormous diligent efforts were purport purportedly done to benefit the public. So... Who may per, per, okay, so whatever. For those who are either or both UFO fanatic or foe, the FBI's latest online FOIA compliance project offers literal treasure troves with a wealth of valuable resources that brings in droves of incoming daily traffic. So I think you can actually go and read these for yourself too. So what is this? The Hakui, Hakui, Hakui UFO Museum? I don't know if I'm reading this right. Despite popular but contrary beliefs, intense U.S. government interest and active, uh, Involvement in UFO issues didn't cease or desist one bit when Project Blue Book bit the dust in 1994. Indeed, the very same year marked the start of serious FBI concern over Hakui. Japan's then recently announced plans to build a center for exclusive usage of a UFO research facility. So, I didn't hear about this. I don't know that Japan had a fucking version of Area 51. I mean... Japan doesn't really come in the fucking radar, I think, when you're looking for UFO stuff, right? It's usually just America. As probably to expect, widespread circulation rumors and suspicion soon arose about why the FBI was so worried. The most cited probable cause was a claim that Hakui Museum had somehow managed to obtain a 1950 memo written by the then high-level FBI special agent Guy Hotel. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Metal Gear? Would a Kojima fucking write this? What is this? The classified document discussed a New Mexico UFO case with explicit details about U.S. Air Force discovery of dwarf-sized humanoid bodies dressed in fine-textured metallic cloth bandages. It further related how an unnamed informant explained that the crash was caused by spacecraft mechanism interference from a very high-frequency government radar equipment in close range. Thus, given such revelations, there might be good cause for widespread publication of FBI reports of a one-page memo that's 65 years of age as most viewed document in the vault. I'm going to have to take you guys to this one day. I'm going to have to take you to this place. So when I go to Japan, I'm going to have to fucking, I'm going to have to drive out there, take the rail pass, do something. That being said, we spent way too much time on this. Holy shit. Did not know that existed. Looks like we got a new fucking travel destination. Let's go hit up something else. Oh, what the fuck is this? Oh, oh, you know what we just found? Dude, holy shit. This is the NFO file, I think. For fucking, so who here remembers Columbine and shit, right? You guys, you guys remember, uh, for those of you who don't know what Columbine is, let me fill you in on the thing. Columbine was one of the pivotal, pivotal, pivotal school shootings in America. Like, very historical, right? Like, this is during the years of, uh, what was it, Bill Clinton being in, pre being in presidency at the time. And what happened back then was that two students, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, I think that was his name was, I think I got the name right. No, Eric Harris, Dylan Klebold, I don't know. But these two students basically dressed up in, like, 
Matrix trench coats walked into their school and fucking wiped everyone clean. Like, not everyone, but, like, they fucking went into the cafeteria and put a lot of people down. It was one of the, like, scary school shootings that happened. And it's probably one of the turning points where, like, security was amped up at schools at the time, still is. And you might, you might always hear, you might always, like, hear the fact that there's always school shootings in America anyways. And there are school shootings that happen in America a lot just because access to firearms and, you know, edgy, angsty kids and shit like that. Uh, so it tends to happen, but this is all the way back in the day when they fucking did it. So for those of you who don't know, Eric Harris, one of the school shooters actually made doom maps. Like this is back when doom and doom Two. This is why they kind of tied this to video games a little bit too. Eric Harris built these doom wads. So back in the days of doom Two, you would mod in maps through wads. You would create your own wads and you would send them on the internet. And there was a huge modding community at the time still is. You can see a lot of... Joke mods still kicked in. So Eric Harris made a bunch of mods and uploaded them and people downloaded and played them. This is the NFL file, the text file that was included with those mods. So we're going to see what the fuck he wrote. So title is UAC Labs. And of course you get the file name for UAC Labs.zip. Eric Harris, his email address is rebdoomer.aol.com. Eric Harris and Dylan Cabold are obviously dead at this point. They were, I think they, they did commit like suicide by gun uh, during the shooting, right? And you can actually play these too. Like you can find these Doom wads out there and do it. It's fucking crazy. Um, I'm not gonna fucking play it because you know it's a it's a very touchy subject, and I wouldn't want to fucking I wouldn't fuck with anybody there. So here he writes, miscellaneous author info. What's up, all you Doomers out there? Reb here. That was probably his alias. Bringing you another kick-ass Doom Two wad. This one took a damn long time to do, so send me some bloody credit, man. Sorry the file is so big, but you know how it is when you change sprites. Well. You should know if you ever made if you've ever made wads like this. Enjoy the new death frames made up all myself. No, oh, I never really. That's that's interesting. Do not go to any other level besides the two in this wad. Many sprites were deleted in the wad to make it as small as I could. So some maps have may have been deleted sprites in them, and it will crash Doom too. So don't do it, man. So here's got a description of the story. So, okay, here it goes. After defeating the demons on Earth, you'll learn of a new terror, Phobos, where the hellish battle will begin. Has been taken over again when you were fighting hell on earth, the demon backup crew deciding to pay a visit to Phobos again, no problem, right? All the installations were already destroyed by you and the first attack, right? Yeah, that part's right. But half the surviving humans from earth took refuge there. We just redid the structures to fit our needs and moved in again. Bad idea. Those gates were still active, so uh, chalk up another kill for the demons. After the second attack on Phobos, only 99% of the human population is left. So what they they killed they killed one percent. <laughs> That's not really that much of a fucking loss if you count how many humans that live on the planet, dude. We could scratch those numbers out again. Just call up the Chinese, right? Once you emerged from hell, you took the first ship you could to Phobos. <clears throat> Once again, there were no survivors. <coughs> now it's payback time. Those goddamn alien bastards are gonna get one hell of a BFG blast up their freaking ass. You land on the other side of Phobos where the humans landed for the second time. Your mission is to destroy the two main gates and destroy the platoon of demons of the main teleporter from Phobos to Earth. Use the maps you'll need to find all the hidden secrets and doors. Beware of the two gates. They are still active and more demons might come through any second. The platoon guarding the teleporter out is very large, so beware. Good luck, Marine, and don't forget, Kill them all. The creator of the map is uh, the creators. There's uh, the creators of Edmap, Wintex, BSP, and Doom Two. Oh, those are the tools that were used to make the map. So episode and level map one and two only. Single player, yes. Cooperative, uh, yes. Very fun, challenging too. Deathmatch, yep. Uh, difficulty setting, just stick with ultra violence. I think you just had a fuck ton of enemies on there and probably skewed their stats a little. New sound, new graphics, new music. Demos replaced. Nope. Base. New level from scratch. Editors used. Yeah, those are the programs, right? And known bugs. Well, I can't find any yet. Email me if you come across one. No, I don't think you're on the uh, Bethesda level of making bugs, Eric Harris. But uh, what is this? Authors may not use this level as a build to build additional levels. You may not change a damn thing with this wad. If you do, I will blow you up and it will be cool. You see, we could joke about that, but he actually did fucking kill people in real life. It's fucked up. FTP sites is members.aol.com. Down right now because I don't think anything AOL related is up. BBS numbers, probably gone. Others, well, probably asked from, uh, probably where you got it from, duh, or email me and ask for it. Note, ask for my awesome patch called realdoom.zip. So what we just read over here, ladies and gentlemen, was a NFO file from the creator 
of this map and also somebody who committed one of America's most iconic school shootings. Um, pretty somber shit now that you read it out over here. You know, back in the day, you could probably joke about it and think this was some, you know, edgy dude on the fucking Doom forums and shit. But, uh, nah, him and his friends shot up a whole fucking high school and shit, too. Like, it's not even a fucking joke that we're looking at, too. So, uh, yeah, I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable fucking reading this now. You can actually get these maps available now that I've read on the maps. I kind of want to play them. Um, because, I don't know, he's making a Doom OC fanfic story, so... I'll, I'll probably end up checking them out. I'm not going to record it and put it on YouTube, obviously, just out of respect for, you know, the people involved. But as a part of history, I probably have to check it out. Let's go to something else. The Illuminati, the Illuminatus Observer, destroying the signatures of the occult as only masters of the craft can do. All right, so I, I don't know about you guys, but I've always fucking heard that the Illuminati was fucking run. By, 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 by the occult. And I don't fucking necessarily believe that shit. You know, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm more of those fucking, I, I don't know, dude. I don't believe that. So let's go, let's go into seeing that. I think it's just a bunch of old farts who control the world. If that's even a thing. Now over here, they've got a uh, show that starts up. I think they got a little podcast. All right. If you want, if you don't want it to hear a podcast over here, here you go. I think this guy runs the podcast, Red Ice Radio. That's that's pretty, why am I saying podcast like this? I don't know. Conceptuals in the alphabet. P and Q. Prince and Queen. What? Let it, motherfucker, are we going to use the alphabet? Okay. <coughs> Dear God, what have I gotten myself into, huh? Let us peer closely into the nature of the alphabet. Let's make this fucking bigger, by the way. For instance, the word problem contains two syllables and six phonemes. 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 Oh, I'm so tired right now. The lowercase letter P is presented as P, which may be spun 180 degrees on the axis to form the letter D. <laughs> While the letter B, represented as a lowercase B, may be spun 180 degrees to form the letter Q. In which case, the letter D may be flipped 180 to form the letter B, while the letter Q may be flipped 180 degrees to form the letter P. Oh my god. Holy fuck, dude. Since letters are but representations of a more atomic level representation of the alphabet, we note that the letter P and B are but allophones. In the Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Formation, we can add that the letters P and B represent models of hardness and softness, by which the letter P has a hard sound and the letter B has a soft sound. What? B and P. Like, what the fuck? What is that? <laughs> what do you mean hard and soft? All right, what is this shit, dude? I don't think the letter P has an erection compared to the letter B, but hey, you know... That's good. Sorry, that was my mouse. All these hints at conceptuals within the alphabet, since we know that the letter B is feminine, Isis pregnant with Horus, we can then show that the lowercase when spun 180 degrees on axis, forming thus the letter Q, we can show a link between the letter Q as the fertilized egg. Alright, look, I'm gonna stop right the fuck here, because you know what it sounds like? You know when we joke about fucking conspiracy theories and shit? Like, there's, like, a ch channel on YouTube. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it relates everything. It's like a fucking... I think it's, like, a Christian channel or something like that. It relates everything to fucking... To, to, the, to the devil. You know what I mean? Like, fucking... You could show them a fucking smartwatch or something, and they'd be like, this is... This is the devil's uh, plaything. All right, this is the devil's toy. The devil made 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 apple. <laughs> it's like that, but like this is fucking like somebody wrote this shit, and I don't fucking understand. All right, let's go. So once we move through here, the word stop conceptuals in the alphabet. I I like that by the way. That's probably somebody's wallpaper. That has to be my wallpaper. The alphabet contains within itself numerous cipher wheels. Words derived from the cipher wheels may be representative of designs. Within the conceptual fabrication of the alphabet, the word stop is a very representation of this idea. The word stop represents two linear segments of the alphabet, i.e. QRST and MNOP. You can then break out the word stop to form S top. A top is, oh my god, what the fuck? This is literally that fucking conspiracy theory guy. Oh, oh what am I? Oh, this is great. Mm, this is mm, amazing. The top is an object form in the form of a children's toy. The spins on an axis. <laughs> kind of kind of weird timing to be talking about kids' toys and spinning, right? <laughs> Especially considering uh, today's latest trends. Anyways, 
As the inertia slows down, the top begins to wobble more ever pronounced until the top falls. The top is also the uppermost limit, which is to say that that is what is on top has no higher competitor. Here we find that the night sky, as viewed over time, represents that of a top <coughs> that is spinning. In this case, the night sky appears more as a plate spinning on a stick as viewed from before. But in either case, whether it is the top spinning on its axis, in which the night sky would cast virtually by design, or if you were to view the night sky as spinning as a plate on a stick, the perception remains the same. Have we really compared the alphabet to a fucking kid's toy? Alright, motherfucker, what is this, Beyblade? Right, is Beyblade responsible for 9-11? Alright, is Beyblade responsible for fucking, what, Hiroshima and Nagasaki now? Like, what are we getting into, dude? Like, what the fuck? I don't, I don't get it. What is this? The number of Isisian codes? What? the fuck? Holy shit. Wait, what is this? If you break single letters apart from the larger word, where though breaking of a single letter reveals yet another word, e.g. F and lag, where an F is broken off and the word lag remains, you may begin to comprehend how conceptuals have been designed into the alphabet. In this case, you ask, what is the F and what is the lag? Who does that? All right? Like, you can do that with anything, man. Like, what the fuck? Flag? Get out of here, dude. What are we getting into? This was posted at 8.57. I really hope not fucking today, dude. Holy shit. The key code to Luciferianism? The Isisian codes? Okay. All right. You know, we just uh, we just got into this website. I'm not I'm not skipping it real quick. This this needs to be uh, investigated. What is this? 7-Eleven esoteric constructions in the alphabet? Dude, what is this? Are you talking shit about 7-Eleven? Well, you heard it here. 7-Eleven, or more appropriately, 7 and 11, provides us with multiple means of masking pie into a double pie in 7-Eleven? Oh, dude, 7-Eleven is where you get your slushies and your cigarettes from, dude. That's that's what 7-Eleven, there's no conspiracy. 7-Eleven is not that. Oh my god, what the fuck? <coughs> the article will shed some light as to the complexities of these operations, their means of executions, and the implications and opportunity of creating myriad anchors within the alphabet. 7-Eleven and the Acromatic Cipher. Let us review some of the basic elements of the construction. Let us. All right, so here we got this sick tattoo design. All right, let's go down. The creation myths. Oh, do I have to fucking censor this or what? No, there's no penises or anything shown. I think it might be a tit, so yeah, probably, considering YouTube's bullshit, I probably have to... Let's, let's scroll out of that real quick. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's fucking... One, one of the great ways to understand the speculative Masonic arts, oh, all the way from fucking 7-Eleven to the Freemasons, as well as larger Western esoteric traditions to include esoteric Christianity, which is known as the procession of the equinoxes. In short, the earth wobbles on its axis like a top shifting, oh, we're bringing fucking Beyblades back, all right, shifting one degree every 72 years. The total time to complete one rotation on its axis is known as Plato's Great Year. All right. The Great Pyramid of Egypt is perhaps the most studied of all ancient architectures relative to Western esoteric traditions, especially as these traditions pertain to Freemasonry. Some celestial constraints, constants, that are embedded into the Great Pyramid include the following. The length of the base side is 9,131 pyramid inches measured in the mean socket level. You know, isn't it true that, like, I know I'm fucking tired right now, but it's true that we haven't figured out how to build, like, the pyramids or something like that? I'm sure we've probably figured out how to do it by now. But, like, you gotta remember, back in the day, dude, that was actually a fucking massive feat of architecture and engineering, dude. The fact that they build those pyramids how they were. I mean, back in the day, when you didn't have any, when you when you had, like, slaves for your construction work, right? No equipment, just people carrying those big-ass fucking stones, right? Jesus. That shit must have been fucking crazy. Oh, we're back to the letters. All right, at least everything's tying in together. So, 7-Eleven to fucking letters. The letters being encoded are the letters G and T. The operative word is got. From where? What? In this case, we divide the alphabet in half and arrived at MNO, and we define. Okay. This is what we're gonna do. Look at how far this goes. Look at the comments. Anonymous said, thanks for another insightful post. Uh, yet only few understand the symbolism, just like 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven is, of course, the hidden 9-Eleven, except Ember was originally the seventh month. Oh my god. Seven times 11. 77 and the London bombs were on the 7th of July. Have you read about Shakespeare's sonnets? And not, Are we really comparing Shakespeare's sonnets 
to 9-11. I'm done, dude. We're, we're going to a different site. Oh, my God. What? Today? You know what? Today has been the fucking... <coughs> we used to joke about conspiracy theories. <coughs> Sorry for my coughing. Got a nasty, na nasty case of uh, bullshit ingested in from the site. We're gonna go to something that's actually not making the parody seem like a fucking reality. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hopefully find something better. Shit. All right, so here's our deep web video of the week with a very weird ass four by three aspect ratio I'm finding, but it starts off with a shot of a lovely pavement ground. It's about one minute and six seconds long. Of course, six seconds above our uh, deep web average. Let's hit and play and see what we've uh, really found. Would you look at that? Fucking listenable music. It's not oh, locks. It's an art project. Playgrounds. I'm not into playgrounds. Dude. That's fucked up. <laughs> Why are we at a fucking playground, dude? I don't want to see a fucking... Alright. Shots of the fucking sky. Panning. Walking towards. This is actually very fucking... Very soothing out of somewhere. Okay, where are the monkey bars and shit? Why are we at a playground? I don't fucking understand this. I don't know, I find it uneasy being at a playground in one of these videos, cause, you know. No. Okay. This this seems like it's this seems like it's not in this isn't in the States at all. Fucking peeping at somebody getting into a car? Is that a woman? You can't tell, it's not focused on her. She's getting into a she's getting into a fucking car or something. Is that a fucking Volvo? Petunia Parki, 1992. Hold the fuck up. Alright, so that was a minute of fucking playgrounds. Alright, swinging set at a playground. First of all, let's be serious what it is. It's obviously an edgy art project, if anything. But, it's also an ARG, and in my honest opinion, a slightly interesting ARG, I gotta say. You know, considering that it's actually shot rather well for being in such an obscure uh, transmission method. You know what I mean? Like, transmission type, I guess. It's... I mean, this aspect ratio is just just off the hook. I don't know. I don't know if he meant. I don't know if he meant to keep the square videography going there. Or she kept it going there. Sorry, I just assumed. Uh, but obviously, it starts out with what I fucking have to think is probably a lady getting into a car. All right, uh, and it's by a playground. So I don't know. This is the thing about args. I don't understand if I'm seeing the whole product. Like, is this the whole fucking video, or is it like chopped and screwed? You know what I mean? Because like, anytime you get a cut. It's like, is this actually what was in the video? Or is this like, is this the video? Am I being lied to? Or things like that, right? So, of course, after the park, which you get for about 40 seconds, you get up to... <coughs> you get up to this moment where you see, like, a bunch of exposed wires by this... Uh, and an X, actually. Exposed wires on this fucking... Um, on this on, on, the, on this pole but there's something weird about the x i don't know if people kind of agree with me over here but like i feel like that x is added in post-production just the way it's melding in with some of these things right look, look at the way it melds with that f uh, look at the way it melds with that all the way down over here it just seems fucking weird to me i don't really get i don't i don't think the i mean the x seems like it's fucking edited in somewhat you know i don't know like right over here you can see it gets like white and shit it feels like this is posted on i don't I don't know. Actually, that could be a sign that it wasn't edited in just because if you were to highlight everything, it would be, you would have like patches where the white would be more prevalent. It's just weird. Um, I mean, if it is edited in, it's done pretty well, but you might not be able to tell it because of the off resolution and aspect ratios of this fucking video. But as you progress through, the woman gets into the car, drives off, but this person's filming it from the window. Now, here's the thing. Say these things are fake, right? If they're real, they're very well done args. But now say, say, well, no, if they're fake, they're very well done args all the way around. But if they're real, this dude's just filming, like, playgrounds and shit. But the creepy thing is he's filming this fucking woman getting into a goddamn car and driving off. Now, of course, the story of the woman, I don't really fucking know who the fuck she... I don't even know if that's a woman. I'm assuming it could be a woman, right? Just because of the shape and size of it. But if you look by the light pole, this guy... The, the fucking actual park is just off camera to the left, right? Judging by that pole right over there, and I'm going to assume. He gets all the way up over here to this apartment block... Looks down and sees a woman getting in. And this is like fucking vintage shit. I haven't seen this kind of stuff when I was in like... There was a time when I was in Brooklyn. They had like old ass gratings like that. So clearly they live in an older part of the fucking city. But here they have Petunia Parky, which I want to actually Google up and see what the fuck it really is. Petunia Parky. 
Petunia Parky Bursa. There you go. I'm getting something out of here, too. So Petunia Parky actually has an Instagram page, it fucking seems. If I can go onto the Instagram page and see if this is actually what it is. I think it's what it is. It's in... Hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's actually a fucking, it's a, I think it seems to be like a big fucking park now. If I can just get the actual date out of it. It's near places such as Bessifler, Barris, Konak. Uh, hmm, I can't figure out, what is this? Where, where is the actual location for it? I'm trying to figure out. Petunia Parky, give me the actual locale. Um, hmm. Petunia Parky location. Here we go. I mean, it could just be a general thing like, you know, general park or something like that i wouldn't really know uh petunia park huh i i I can't figure out what it is but i mean it seems like something in like eastern europe probably maybe i don't know i don't know maybe in like the netherlands or some shit like that there's something over here like 1992 was formed Maybe if I had the year of search into it, Petunia Parky 1992, I could probably narrow it down uh, real quick, actually. Um, no, that just leads me to some, like, fucking weird DNA shit. <laughs> so, hey, wherever the location is, not in the States, obviously, you can tell by uh, just even the license plates on some of those vehicles, right? Some of the home designs as well. It's clearly in some place in like Eastern Europe or like places like that too, like, you know, Netherlands or maybe some shit like that, Europe in general. So wherever this is, it's obviously hosted right out of that shit. Now, of course, whether it's real or not, I've done more investigation than I really would have had to if this would have been something that didn't interest me. But I'm kind of interested to see where this goes. It doesn't have that weird, like, edgy shit where you have the VCR, you know, footage, like, logo, like, not logos, but the font. It's actually interesting. The music works well, and I don't know what the fuck the message could be, but the square aspect ratio gives me a fucking boner, so I'm excited to see where the fuck this goes. That being said, let's back out and check something else out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember last week when we looked at Qsimet's home? Welcome to Qsimet's home. Completion of the site is currently, as of this date, at 10%. So last time we checked, they were at 5% development. The reason why I have Google of Qsimet actually on here is just a little experiment. I know that I made the huge deal in episode 100 where I told you a lot of these sites go up and a lot of these sites go down. And I wanted to show you guys how much of a reality that can really be because these sites come up and they go down. So I wanted to see how long Qsimet was really active for and, hey, maybe by the time we're all said and done, this could be gone within a few weeks or it could be one of the more bustling forum sections of the deep web let's go see what it's all about so completion of the site goals achieved so far are setting up tour creating the basic site setting up the forum and then boosting forum performance to do what he's doing now is setting up mail server setting up a free web mail free cloud free file sharing server grow bigger than all the other sites my boy Qsimit growing bigger than all the other sites you know I'm gonna let you know right now Qsimit I'm fucking rooting for you dude you better not let this dream die motherfucker because I'm gonna be really fucking sad if it does <laughs> realistically because I'm putting a lot of emotional investment into it dude you're a little you're, you're I got you, man. About a short history lesson. Read it. It's fun. So here we are. 4.06.2017. Oh, boy. The beginning of Qsimet's home. We started with the basic server. And that's what he posted last time. Footer, you reached the end of the page. Awesome. We read that last time. But yeah, that's the server and shit. Now we're going to go to his forum page. And his forum page motherfucking got some views, ladies and gentlemen. So it's all basically by Qsimet. I don't think anybody else has made an account. But he's got basically like three posts going around. So he's got Qsimet email systems. And then Hero Zarf is the only one that not, you know, who's not Qsimet who's made a fucking post. Let's go see what they wrote. So here in the email servers to all the Qsimeters. <laughs> I love this guy. Uh, he's making a free mail server. So who is Qsimet? Who knows? I just came to see how the site develops. Hopefully it doesn't die and actually becomes a good forum. Ah, see fucking, yeah, some ordinary game gamer is, it's, is Cull. Uh, yeah, it's one of our, it's one of our teammates, right? Thanks. It'll be a good forum. Oh, that's good. Cause Qsimet's fucking all cool about it. Oh, wait, all the fucking, we need, we need some Sog worshiper. Gee, we need, we need somebody else out of here. Hope to see a site flourish. Her makes me mood hard. Thanks a lot. Share this with your fellow dark webbers. Qsimet, dude, I don't know about you, man, but I'm, I'm sorry if this turns into a fucking, if this, if this turns into my scary comment sections when I upload some fucking <laughs> retarded ass gaming videos, but let, let me know. I love you. 
So Qsimet writes, who is Qsimet? We're going to find out who he is. Uh, it's me, the one and only Qsimet. So you might think, who the fuck are you? Yeah, who are you, Qsimet? Well, let me tell you that right now. I'm a junior pen tester and software developer. I write things for fun, but also to prove my points. One of my life goals are to host a successful dark web market, forum, and other stuff on the deep web. I'm not going to tell anything more about me. It's up to you to find out who I am and what I love to do. Peace out, Q. How's password security? Hash and salted. I think PHPBB uses Bcrypt, but I don't know myself. It's secure. I'm currently working on a custom forum. Yeah, he's probably going to change this one out to another forum that he builds. So yeah, we learned a little bit about QSMED. He's a junior pen tester and software developer. I think, honestly, <laughs> it's cute though. Like uh, this guy, this guy seems like he just has like, I don't know, like just from his post, he seems like a pretty chill fucking dude. So I can kind of get down with it, QSMED. I know it's kind of, I know it's kind of weird if I show you the same sort of site, but I don't know what it is. Oh no, I was actually wrong. Completion of site is at 18%. I read that as wrong. So, uh, you know, I, I I know, I know I'm probably going to show you the same site, uh, you know, every, every fucking week here about Qsimet, but I'm hoping maybe, maybe in like fucking 30, 40 episodes, this might turn into a fucking bustling community that hopefully Qsimet doesn't fucking hate if I, if I, you know, bring more attention to it. So, hey, you know, we might see the start of a bustling internet community. That being said, uh, pl please don't destroy his message board, I swear to God. <laughs> please don't just be nice and everything about it and uh yeah we're gonna back out and uh go to something go to something else we're seeing the birth of our of our hopefully new successful silk road right in front of us let's go hit up something else el herbario welcome to the shop 2.0 now i don't really show you guys a lot of marijuana sites just because marijuana sites are pretty fucking common you know what i mean like a lot of people have seen what marijuana sites do and like what well, once you've seen one marijuana sites all right once you've seen one once you've seen a little bit of the devil's cabbage you know it's not exactly new information right so here is el herbar hell herbolario sorry i read that fucking wrong all right it's late products gorilla glue number four <laughs> You know, it's very reminiscent of the old school markets, but he's got this nice style to it that I just fucking love. I don't know why. It's got this like olive green, almost like Windows XP. Motherfucker, you don't want it to be blue. Make it look olive green. <laughs> so he's got. So over here, you can see that he doesn't have the prices in Bitcoin or USD. It's actually in a, is that Euro? It's not pound sterling. It's Euro. So he's got a Gorilla Glue number, Gorilla Glue number four, indoor. One, uh, that's for like 40 to 210 uh, fucking euro. That's 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 some of the dank shit is what it could be let's actually view that because that's fucking pricey uh you got 1g sample indoor try us all right for not for nine uh, euros you know and then you got the 20 euro 1g el herbolario isolator which what the fuck is that all right let's go see the gorilla glue man <laughs> wait i didn't add all this shit to my card fuck you dude i'm not buying this shit yet so all right here gorilla glue uh, number four, developed by GG Strains, is a potent hybrid strain that delivers heavy-handed euphoria and relaxation, leaving you feel glued to the couch. It's chunky. Resin-covered buds fill the room with pungent, earthy, and sour aromas inherited from its parents' strains. <laughs> you know what it's like? It's like, you ever heard, like, those fucking professional, like, wine tasters and shit? Uh, you know the ones that are like, they take like a sip of wine and they're like, oh, it's this, this, is nutty aroma, all that shit. Like, they're, they're experts. They get paid a fuck ton, like winologists and shit. It's almost like reading that. So the parent strains are Ken's sister, Sour Dub. I'm glad it's not, you know, dabbing or something. <laughs> and Chocolate Diesel. <laughs> so as you wonder, how high do you have to be to name the fucking strain that you made? Taking first place in both the Michigan and Los Angeles 2014 Cannabis Cups as well as the High Times Jamaican World Cup. Okay, look, man. I didn't even know that was a fucking thing. I didn't know that Michigan and LA had a fucking cannabis cup. And Jamaica, I mean, Jamaica probably did, but High Times Jamaican World Cup, like, <laughs> motherfucker. What is this on? Dude, you realize, you realize how much of a killing somebody could make sure they stream that shit to Twitch every fucking year? Oh, dude, all the, all the, all the Kappa faces and Lenny's? This multiple award-winning hybrid supremacy is no longer a secret, and consumers will search far and wide to get their hands sticky with Gorilla Glue number four. Please read our FAQ page before purchasing. Yeah, they tell you that, like, black tar heroin covered on, so it fucking gets you hooked. So apparently it's 100% relaxed, it's 85% happy, which guarantees that at least fucking 15% of you is going to be fucking filled with rage. 83% euphoric, 63% uh, uh, uplifted. How do you... 
how do you fucking how, how do you percentage like how, how do you how do you get how do you quantify the sleepiness and the euphoricness and the happiness uplifted like relaxed maybe like if you're relaxed to zero percent i'm fucking up like this versus 100 percent that you're on the verge of fucking dying maybe i don't know so they have other products <coughs> such as critical jack all right now if you go to the faq which payments do you accept uh how many how much time oh so it's just general shit it's nothing massive like that uh, i'm afraid to order and don't receive it oh what is he gonna get uh, i can't help you with this if you are con if you aren't convinced but keep in mind i do this to support my family so it'll not be smart to scam people hey you know if he's trying to if he's trying to support his family and shit you know by all means <laughs> uh, so, i mean <laughs> it's up to you man you want to do some weed you got the weed so i don't know if he's really legit but I mean, if he's got some actual, like, you know, things, like, if he's got some legit, like, people vouching for him, I don't know, I'd, I'd give it a chance. Again, I'm not condoning you buy illicit drugs on the deep web, that's, that, that ain't happening, my boy. So, you know, <laughs> just, uh, just not. Nah. Let's actually see what he says for FAQ, because I believe I got some more FAQ shit that should, he's not, oh, how to buy, English tutorial, uh, he's also got a douche tutorial, uh, Dutch, uh, cannabis extracts, hash, 100% bio, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Discounts and specials, indoor strains, outdoor strains, 100% bio, cannabis, all right. Uh, yeah, cannabis extracts and hash, what do you, what do you have for that? He's got a, he's got a couple products on there. So he sells, like, he said, he sells, like, yeah, isolator, what the fuck is the isolator? Let me go see this. What the fuck? homemade isolator this is this looks like fucking man whatever it is dude i'm not an expert on marriage wainal so you know i'm gonna I'm have to keep my <laughs> i'm gonna have to keep my <laughs> mouth reserved on this so yeah i know i know showing you some of these sites you know this is not that exciting i, I only show you the sites where they have some actual legit like personality built into it so l uh herbalario has some personality to it somebody behind this is definitely selling some premium dank it seems I, I can't confirm if it's legit or not i'm not ordering dank especially off the deep web and uh, you know they do it to support their family and you gotta hustle what you gotta do right so if you want to buy some fucking plants that'll that'll get you high <laughs> this is where it's at again we don't condone it because you shouldn't be buying illegal shit off the deep web that's my uh, disclaimers done. Let's hit up uh, something else. You guys ever go on SoundCloud and have your favorite rapper just stop making music for you and have your favorite, you know, dubstep dude forget for, for can't can't be fucked to make some new uh, some new epic tracks? Well, let 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 me let me show you a site where it can generate the music for you. So this is a program that performs algorithmic music composition since the 1980s. This is a sample of some of the work exerted from a program written in 1986 for your amusement and possibly ed edif edification. All right. When you click on either of the MIDI uh, buttons below, a small suite of programs will compose some generic boogie woogie of the R&R &R variety. An express result is MIDI data. If you have a MIDI synthesizer or two or three attached to your computer, or if you have a MIDI plugin like QuickTime Instruments on your web browser, you can play the Mac. All right, so we're going to generate some fucking music. Now, it's not for the faint of heart. What, am I going to fucking hear, like, like fucking, you know, FNAF screaming or some shit? Yeah. Well, let's go into this. All right, so, huh, I just got finished writing a hot little boogie-woogie in the key of ebb. I wrote it just for you. I got my inspiration by meditating on your mystic number. <laughs> ah, that's a fucking VPN IP. God bless. <laughs> If I knew your name, I would name it after you. I'm such a romantic, but as it is, I'm calling it something as beautiful. Boogie Woogie Opus 43932. It's 28 measures long. All right, let's play the uh, let's play the fucking dank MIDI channel one. So let's open it. This is boogie.midi. So let's open it up. It's about 11.2 kilobytes. Let's hit open. I hope it's not fucking just some like retarded ass screaming dude. If it is, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to just die. All right, we're going to hear some fucking music generated searching for multimedia plug son of a bitch <laughs> uh yeah install yeah from the bats i don't really fucking care all right it seems like we've uh we've started this program and it's about 46 seconds uh 46 seconds long this midi file i actually have to get a separate program for it let's hit play and see what it's like let's see what this robot generated a lot of build up for That's pretty good, holy shit! All 
That's pretty good, dude. Jesus. Uh, I think we can end it right over there. That, that, that was interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just had a fucking, we just had a program play, uh, we just had a website generate us a little music file. A little boogie file for us to boogie woogie on using the IP address. So basically what it is, is it's like a procedurally generated song that was generated using our IP address as a seed for this. So basically, if you go through proxies and shit, you could probably find like other and other copies for it. If you'd like me to compose a different one for you, you'll have to reload this page. Don't let your browser cache this copy. If you you can tell whether a new boogie is produced by seeing the key, length, tempo, and things. So go to the site and it could generate new and new music for you. So I guess if you wanted to get that new YouTube outro music going on, <laughs> you got it right here. <laughs> that was that was that was actually that was that was a lot of effort for something that was. 30 seconds long, let's go to something else. And ladies and gentlemen, that was Deep Web Browsing episode number 103. Ladies and gentlemen, if you liked what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. We saw some interesting stuff today, ladies and gents. We've seen some conspiracies. We've seen a we've seen what I what I would have believed to be parody conspiracy theories turn out to be real. I got a I got another thing for my travel itinerary to Tokyo and Frankly, I've seen some fucking premium dank kush sold by someone who's just trying to feed his fam, man. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting shit. Interesting stuff today, ladies and gentlemen. Even fucking Eric Harris's Doom Map NFO got my fucking butthole a little fingered. But, that being said, I want to wonder what you thought about this episode. If you like the approach of it, let me know what you thought about it so we can make it better for next time. That being said, this is me, Mudahar, and I am out. Mm -hmm.